Hello everyone, my name is Martin Mischiak and on the behalf of my colleagues Arnold Fuhrmann and Mark erich Latoschik, I will be presenting our work on imposter-based rendering acceleration for XR. A central characteristic of XR's immersive qualities is a believable depth perception. The necessary depth cues, however, can become very expensive to generate, as new XR hardware constantly strives towards higher resolutions and refresh rates. To achieve peak performance levels across a large variety of hardware, virtual objects need to be reduced in their geometric and shading complexities. A common approach for optimizing rendering performance is to employ various, various mesh simplification techniques. One extreme form of simplification are imposters. In its most common form, an imposter replaces the original 3D object with a rendered image of itself. Due to its simple geometry and pre-calculated radiance values, an imposter can be rendered much faster than the original object. Although imposters are only valid for a small viewing region, they are still a popular choice in non-XR applications to replace distant or contextual objects. The imposter illusion, however, does not work in XR anymore, as the underlying geometry fails to reproduce the correct binocular disparity cues. An imposter is simply perceived as a flat image, even when viewed from the correct viewpoint. Motivated by the great speedup of this technique, our work aims to address this issue, as we propose an imposter-based rendering system for modern XR devices. Over the years, a number of different imposter techniques have been explored. The majority relies on a pre-computed representation, which aims at completely replacing the original object. Our approach, on the other hand, dynamically recreates imposters at runtime. This allows us to better handle dynamic aspects of the scene, such as changes in lighting or geometry. Most similar to our work is the technique of Schaufler. He also presented a rendering system which relies heavily on dynamically generated imposters. We follow the same core principle of reusing previously rendered images of objects, but we extend this idea to be applicable to modern XR applications. To create a three-dimensional perception, an imposter has to replicate the binocular disparity between the left and right images of the substituted object. We achieve this by displaying a separate imposter for each eye. We call this image pair a stereoscopic imposter. Viewing such an imposter pair from the same position as it was created results in a correct three-dimensional perception of the original object. However, as the user moves away from the capture viewpoint, the perceived shape of the object becomes increasingly distorted. To solve this issue, the correct parallax movements of the depicted surface have to be considered. We achieve this by storing additional depth values for our imposters and performing a ray-matched parallax correction step, which looks like the following. When rendering an imposter from a novel view, we first intersect the view ray with the object's bounding box. The two intersection points are then transformed into the screen space of the capture viewpoint. Here, the two transform points define the search interval for the ray marching step, which is then performed to find the surface point visible from the novel view. This correction step is separately performed for both stereoscopic imposters. The search interval length depends on the distance between the novel view and the capture position. So for small viewpoint changes such as typical headsway movements or looking around, the ray marching costs are kept minimal. We experimented with different sampling strategies to increase the temporal stability of our imposters. While a single sample ray marching is the fastest rendering method, it is also prone to silhouette and inner surface flickering. Sending out multiple ray marches and averaging their results creates excellent uh, aliasing or anti-aliasing. However, it becomes prohibitively expensive for a larger number of imposters. So instead, we chose to perform only one ray march with a subsequent multi-sampling of the hit point area. To guarantee a hit point in the vicinity of silhouette edges, we dilate the depth values of our imposters by a few pixels outwards. The results of this method are comparable to multiple ray marches, however at a fraction of the cost. Our stereoscopic imposters are valid for the typical range of head movements. However, as users walk around and explore the environment, our imposters can become increasingly invalid. The two main factors are the revelation of the secluded areas 
and a resolution mismatch between an imposter and the real object. The regeneration process consists of rendering the underlying object from a novel viewpoint and storing it inside our main imposter atlas. The first step is to determine which imposters are most in need of regeneration. This happens based on our regeneration metric. An imposter begins its regeneration process by computing its next view and projection capture matrices. The novel viewpoint for which the rendering will occur is derived from the current head position and is then extrapolated a few frames into the future. To create imposters of more complex objects without exceeding the frame budget, the rendering process can be spread over multiple frames. Each frame renders then a subset of the object's triangles into a second atlas texture, the accumulation atlas. After the last triangle has been regenerated, the result is copied over to the main atlas from where it can be used during regular rendering. As imposters are replaced by new ones, the resulting image can suffer from sudden popping artifacts, hurting the overall temporal stability. For this reason, we are performing a blending operation between the old and the new imposter image. As, in, as a new imposter is finished regenerating, the current imposter is copied over to a third atlas, the history atlas, where it can be used for interpolation towards the new imposter image. As already mentioned, our main threats to imposter validity are disocclusions and a resolution mismatch. They also form the basis for our regeneration metric. We use a conservative parallax measure by Shade et al. for our disocclusion term. The texture term is binary and is set to 1 if a better fitting tile is present in our atlas or 0 otherwise. To better determine the regeneration priority when considering multiple imposters, we added a distance and a field of view weighting term. Let's move on to the evaluation. We implemented a VR version of our rendering technique and evaluated it using a computer graphics museum test scene. This scene contains a total of 324 3D models with varying geometric and material properties. The models have roughly 83 million vertices and are spatially grouped together into eight different stations. We captured a stereoscopic image sequence of approximately 9000 frames, as seen here in the video, and used it in our performance and image quality comparisons. In the following evaluations, we will compare our imposter-based rendering system against the classic mesh-based rendering approach. Our imposter-based system uh, replaces all of the 324 models in the scene with stereoscopic imposters and updates them as necessary. In terms of performance, we can see that our approach is able to achieve a frame rate of over 90 Hz for this complex scene, which outperforms the naive mesh rendering condition by a factor of 3 to 6. If we include levels of detail, the performance of the mesh rendering condition improves significantly. However, our technique is still faster by a factor of 2 to 3. The only time where mesh rendering with LODs slightly outperformed our imposters was at station 4, where a large number of very simple objects is rendered. For image quality, we compared our technique to mesh rendering using the SSIM and LPIPS metrics. Throughout the sequence, our imposters are very close to the reference as we achieve SSIM scores between 0.98 and 0.99. The lowest scores are achieved at station 5 and 6, which showcase objects with highly specular reflections and objects with a high disocclusion potential. To evaluate the temporal stability of our approach, we captured a sequence of 190 frames exhibiting typical headsway movements. We used a TPSNR metric, which computes the peak signal to noise ratio between the different images of two subsequent frames. Our technique achieves a higher TPSNR score than the mesh-based rendering method with 4 times MSAA. The improved temporal stability can also be seen in the accompanying videos. This concludes our presentation of the proposed imposter-based rendering system. The system allows scenes with complex objects to be rendered at high frame rates on modern XR headsets. In terms of limitations, our system is not designed to provide speedouts for continuously changing objects, as constant regenerations would negate the performance benefit of the imposter representation. In future work, we would like to perform a user study to validate the perceptual quality of our solution. We would also like to explore the use of ray tracing for disocclusion mitigation and even selective imposter regeneration on a per pixel basis. 
Finally, we would like to implement our technique into a popular game engine, as we believe it could be a useful tool in the hands of other researchers and developers alike. Thank you for your attention.